Hi, Sarah, I can see you now. Can you? Okay, cool. I could see you and I was wondering, can you hear me? I can hear you, but I cannot see you. Ah, I don't know why that is. I don't know what that's about. I haven't turned my camera off. Let me, I don't know why that is. <laughs> Let me see display. Hang on. Uh... I don't know why I had to admit you as an attendee, not as a panelist. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't understand why you can't see me. Hmm, just checking. Because you are, you are there as an attendee, you know, as a panelist. So I'm just checking in the settings, if just in case the panelists are no, uh, the attendees are no having the video. No, it doesn't look so. Hmm. Hmm. That's strange. Yes, I don't understand why. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I also see that you're having your hands up in the... Yeah, I tried to kind of get your attention. Yeah. <laughs> um... Am I in? I'm. Am I still there? Yes, I am. I. I had a lot of other. I don't know if it's because I've got other things open. Oh no! If I leave webinar, hang on. Can, let me. I, I may come back in. Hang on. Okay. I, I leave you okay. back. Okay. Yes, fine. Hmm. Hmm. Ciao Giada, gli, appena, gli ho mandato varie volte il link, adesso magari lo chiamo, gli mando anche l'invito come panelist in modo che possa gestirlo, grazie. Fammi sapere se lo riceve nel caso ci siano problemi, grazie.
Funciona. Okay. Okay, now it's working. Brilliant. I'm just trying to call also the, the person in charge of it, of the transmission, but I don't see anything. Let's just call it rejected. Okay, brilliant. I can see you. I think because you were registered as an attendee, you know, as a panelist. Ah, okay. I think for that. You didn't receive the, the other email for the panelists. No, I, if I did, I, I haven't found it. I'm, no, I, I had one. I had I had one from you with a link, and I yeah. thought oh, I have the link, and I put it in my calendar, and then it didn't work. So I. Yeah, I I, I, I joined using the same link. I don't know why. I don't know. We are we are here. We're so, here. We're here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've I've, I've I want to show you something. Uh, these are the slides. I sent too many through, I'm afraid, yeah. but I will, um, I'll skip over the ones that I think are a bit over the top. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. You can have all of this lace there and you can tell us, because again, it's a chart, it's one hour. It's a chat, yeah. Yeah. I'll let them ask the question. i show you the slides so you can have it. Can you see them? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So this is the agenda. So it's me. I'll do a bit of country presentation and talk us briefly about Brexit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's myself. Oh, what's this thing? Okay, I need to do the presentation, of course. Nice picture. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I really love also your picture, actually. Your new one. I mean, said the other one. So that I'll do the <laughs> Sorry. The other one. The new one was better, but don't worry. If you didn't have it. No, I used the, the new one. Uh -huh. uh, so it's not bad. So this is my country presentation. This is you. Ah, there I am. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Okay. So uh, very nice picture. Very, very nice picture. I really like it. Very cool for two. And um, I'll briefly make a presentation and I'll leave the screen to you because we won't have a lot of time. I would like to have some questions from the public if they need yeah. to do so. And these are your slides. I literally copy and paste them. That's fine. I, as I say, I will try not. I, I think some of those I won't speak to very much. I just wanted them to have them as information afterwards, largely. So yeah, that's fine. Feel free to skip them if you want. Or if you want me to cancel some of them, please let me know. Uh, yeah, you could probably. Um, just let me know. You could delete number seven. <laughs> uh, which is ah, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, this one? Yeah, because it's basically a, a du duplicate slide, I realized. <laughs> it's fine, it's constant. <laughs> Anything else? Um, let's have a look. Uh, yeah, I. Oh no, I think no, keep those because I, yeah, no, that's. Yeah, you can skip uh, them anyway. I'll just go over them. Just okay. Fine. Fine. okay. And so and this is the part for the QA, just in case we are having any questions. And it's just, I just insert the BSI logo here. So cool. you can. Okay. And this is the thank you slide. Okay. I stop sharing. I want to see if the person in charge. If... Just let me double check a second with the. Uh... Uh, the organizers because another person should be here and I don't see any attendees I don't know why just a second <sighs> Giada. ciao Giada allora Claudio non lo vedo connesso Okay, okay. Let's see, okay. Sì. Okay, perfetto. Okay, va bene. Eh, non vedo nessun non, non vedo nessun nessuna persona registrata, nessuna persona qua, però magari si stanno ancora connettendo. Okay, va bene, perfetto. Okay. Okay. Va bene. Ok, un bacione allora, ci vediamo fra un attimo. Ah, ecco, Claudio si è appena connesso. Perfetto, grazie, ciao. Ciao, ciao.
Hi, Claudio. So Sarah, just for your, for your knowledge, yeah. um, the event is streamed in Italy. Right. Uh, so this, the, the, this image that you see here is the streaming in Italy because the event is an hybrid event. So there are both uh, people that are going to uh, connect online and people that are, will be watching it in person. So, so it's in Italy. Italy. And that others can see it elsewhere, yeah? yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. There is a big public. So I was just talking with the organizers now and uh, and they are there ready because they just finished another webinar. It's another, another, another seminar actually. And they, they are just connecting. Okay. Claudia, I cannot hear you, but please feel free to tell me when we can start. Too much light. <laughs> yes, I'm trying because it's very it's very rainy in, in Manchester, so I'm trying to have a bit of light in my face. It's probably rainy here. Okay, I think we are in streaming now. Do you want me to close my camera? No, that's fine. No, that's You're free fine. to keep it. That's fine. Uh, you are one of the speakers, so it's fine. Um, okay, I'll uh, I'll keep uh, I'll share the screen. So. We'll be able to see the slides then. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. I think we can start. Um, it's very nice to 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 connect with you at ExpoCook. Uh, this is an hybrid event, so we are both Sarah and myself uh, will be the speaker for today. We are connecting from the UK. Uh, we hope that the weather is better than here in, in Italy, and we hope that you are enjoying and making the most of Expo Cook event. Um, uh, the event, th th this webinar is organized in collaboration with the Italian Chamber of Commerce, Innova UK Edge, and of course, Sitch Industria and Expo Cook, which are the main organizers for, for Expo Cook. Uh, the today uh, webinar will focus on the UK and the agri-food sector in, uh, in, uh, in the UK. So we'll, uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to present uh, to you uh, our uh, key speaker, Sarah Walton from the BSI, and myself, um, Julia Sirigu, I'm the Northwest Manager and Representative for the Italian Chamber of Commerce and Industry for the UK. And I'm also one, one of the Senior Innovation and Growth Specialists at Innova UK Edge, the Department and the Agency for the Government for Innovation. Um, so, um, starting uh, with with our with our webinar, I will um, like to uh, briefly introduce myself before explaining and presenting to you what we do at the Italian Chamber of Commerce and also why the UK is a good opportunity for international and Italian companies uh, to, to join and especially in the agri food sector. Um, as mentioned before, I work both. For the for Innova UK Edge, which is focusing on um, innovation and is one of the partners of the Enterprise Euro Network, which is the organization that is behind also the organization of Expo Cook. And on the other hand, I'm the um, Italian uh, Chamber of Commerce Industry for the UK representative uh, for the Northwest. 
Uh, what are we doing at the Italian Chamber of Commerce? We uh, support businesses that want to, uh, Italian businesses especially, they want to enter uh, the UK market. And those UK businesses, they want to connect with Italian businesses and Italian products here in the UK. Um, what I would like to do today is to present to you uh, the key uh, characteristics uh, of, of the UK market and the key information that for you could be important if you decide to export uh, to the UK. First of all, we, what we need to consider is that the UK market in terms of agri-food is one of the key, uh, key markets at the global level. It's just behind France in Europe and just behind Italy in terms of interest in the agri-food sector. Uh, in terms of comparison, uh, North America and Asia Pacific are playing an important role, but in Europe, uh, among the European region countries, the United Kingdom is one of the key countries and there is much interest um, on international food and products and, and the, the market is recovering quite well from the, from the re more, most recent pandemic. So um, I'll briefly mention some information about the Italian market because I know that there are many Italian producers, but uh, please feel free to get in touch with either me or Sich Industria if you're looking to export into the UK and if you need any further information. Uh, take into account that uh, Italy for the UK is the ninth export destination and is the a sourcing country, uh, while uh, the United Kingdom uh, represents for Italy the fifth export destination, um, which means that it's playing an important role uh, from this point of view. Um, the most exported products in 2020, so before, during the pandemic, uh, from Italy to the UK, were um, th those one in the food and drink sectors. So the, 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 the graph is in Italian, but it means um, uh, food and drinks, uh, followed by uh, um, machineries and transports, and uh, definitely um, the fashion sector played an important role in the in the in the internationalization for Italian companies in the UK. So I'm sure that you're aware well where the United Kingdom is, but we can see that is enough so far away from Italy and the capital is London, and there, is, um, there are 66.8 60, million inhabitants, which means that it represents an important market for the food and drink sector, uh, especially if the exporters are um, targeting uh, the right niches of the market and with the right products, of course. Uh, remember that uh, the United Kingdom had just exited the European Union, this means that it's still present as a market in the European region, but some of the regulations, some of the uh, norms are different than in the most recent past. So I will talk about the new regulations too in, and, and, and the existing regulation in, in, in the market for the food and drink sector, for the agri-food agri sector. Um, so I will briefly mention at, at the end of my presentation what Brexit can mean for um, companies uh, in the agri-food uh, sector. So what the agri-food market in the UK uh, represents? Take into account that the market in 2019, so before uh, Brexit, registered uh, 72.8 million of euros of consumption value, uh, making of the UK the ninth country at the global level among the key countries. Okay, so the countries with the uh, um, the wealthier countries, actually. Um, the UK, uh, during the same year, um, represented the 14th country in terms of per capita consumption, in terms of packaged food. So uh, the uh, country represents a very good opportunity for uh, international companies that are working in the agri-food sector and that are interested in exporting packaged food into the UK. Um, of course, uh, slightly, slight changes uh, happened during the pandemic and because of Brexit, but 
I've got good news for you. Uh, the UK market is recovering with respect to the last year, and we 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 think that there will be we forecast any a further improvement uh, next year. So, um, which type of uh, packaged food is? Uh, present in the UK and is most sold in, in the UK. Uh, if we consider uh, also this data from 2019, just to give you an example, uh, excluding the, the most difficult period, which was the last period. So we hope that um, next year um, the UK will be fully, almost fully recovered in terms of uh, ex import and export. And for this reason, I'm presenting the 2019 data because this is a good point of reference without disruption uh, or with just few disruptions. Um, so in 2019, the key categories uh, for uh, the agri-food market in the UK uh, were the staple foods. Uh, so those foods that are, which consumption is for everyday consumption, uh, followed by snacks. Uh, so the uh, growth performance uh, for staple foods was um, um, was a medium level, which means that uh, there could be an improvement, but uh, was having a very positive uh, performance in 2019. And the uh, uh, value in, term, in, in euros, um, in, in millions, sorry, it's not in, I've, I've, there is an arrow here in the slide that I wrote here, billions, but it's millions, in millions of euros was, uh, 24.1 million of euro, uh, while the snacks, um, which could be considered dif different type of snacks, not just unhealthy type of snacks. In the, the, the most recent period, snacks uh, play an important role in the agri food UK market, which means that more and more healthy snacks are entering into the market, and there is a wider interest from uh, the consumers for healthy snacks. Um, and these type of tax and this type of uh, consumption um, was of 22.2 million of euros, while the dairy products, uh, the so-called prodotti latero, latero caseari in Italian, uh, was related uh, to um, a part of the market that was um, uh, equal to 14.9 million of euros, um, while other type of products representing a smaller percentage uh, for, the, for the UK market. Uh, so as I was mentioning before, which are uh, the key characteristics for the UK market? Um, first of all, in the last period, there is a um, high preference uh, for healthy products, including the snacks. Um, so the consumers are selecting more and more healthy products uh, that are also including uh, sustainable packaging and they're also including a type of uh, packaging that is um, uh, considered sustainable. Um, while plant-based products, apologies for this, the, for, for this um uh, typo. So I think I've selected the wrong slides. So plant-based products as an alternative for food and meat are those products that are entering and they are becoming more and more successful in the market. So alternative for food, for meat in, in the market are becoming more uh, and more common, not only in the um, sector of the population that is related to the vegan diet or veg vegetarian diet, but they, come, they are becoming more and more uh, common also among the wider uh, type of market. Um, and, and, and another type of um, products that is um, um, successfully inserted and exported in the UK are the ready meals. Uh, they are typical uh, growing products in the, in the UK. So they are typical products that are um, easy to cook um, and they are um, easily accessible for part of the market. Um, so the distribu distribution system in the UK is favoring cheaper products, but also the, the trend is changing after the pandemic where um, many, um, many uh, consumers approach a different type of um, food and different quality of food. So the, depending on the areas of the UK, the presence of high quality food is extremely important. 
Um, in terms of COVID impact, we can see that there was definitely an impact in the UK, but the, co the country is recovering quite quickly. And we can see that uh, in the, the GDP uh, forecast for 2022 is including a, um, a percentage of 7.3 improvement uh, for next year. Uh, and the import will increase uh, too with respect to 2019. Um, the most affected sectors for 20 was not the agri-food sector, uh, were the construction service and manufacturing sectors for the UK. Uh, what post-Brexit Italian agri-food sector um, uh, is representing for, for the UK? First of all, uh, the key Italian imported products in the UK are wines, especially spumanti, so but the bubbles. We all like bubbles, I think. Uh, as well as tomato sauces and, and peeled uh, tomato, and pasta, cheese, and charcuterie uh, also played an important um, a role as well as olive oil, chocolate and coffee. Um, not surprisingly, rice is one of the key Italian imported products. Um, in terms of exports in the UK, at the end of the transition period, we expect, like, as, I, as I was mentioning before, an improvement in the export of the Made in Italy because it, the, 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 the Made in Italy had a contraction during the, the last year. Um, so the key uh, causes of this were um, related to the bureaucratic and administrative obstacles that uh, um, are present in the UK due to Brexit, uh, longer time, waiting time at the customs for products, and the there could be a lack also of phytosanitary and sanitary requirements um, that are um, related to the UK market. However, the UK forecast in the agri-food sector uh, for the Middle Italy for next year, for, for, for this year and the next year um, is, is positive. And we saw uh, that in 2020, um, there was a decrease in, in, the, in the market, but for next year, 20, this, 2021 and 2022, we'll see an increase um, that of 5.3% uh, of, of, uh, of, 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 of products imported in, in the UK. So uh, is a positive, um, perspective for companies in the agri-food market. So what um, Brexit implies for, um, for, um, for, for the UK? Um, first of all, sorry for, again, I think these are the wrong slides. Um, so first of all, we see a creation of a zone for um, free exchange and free trade without um, any type of uh, charges for, for most of the products, but there are new mechanisms related to the regulation and customs. Um, the, um, um, according to the European UK Trade and Cooperation Agreement, um, the open and distorted competition conceived in a wider trade partnership is um, limiting the presence of state aid and the compulsory application of standards is related to the um, sectors and the areas of environment, fiscal transparency, social and labor law. Uh, the transitional system in several areas is creating some changes, in, especially in terms of marks and regulations. Uh, so the next uh, speaker, uh, Sir Walton, will, will mention the regulations uh, for the UK. What you need to be very careful with is um, that First of all, Brexit is focusing mostly in, on trading goods. Um, so services are, are experiment, they can experiment um, some um, issues, but most of the changes are related to goods. And what you need also to consider is that Northern Ireland um, present different rules that are more that are associated to the European Union. Uh, last but not least, the non-tariff barriers are still existent and, uh, and you need to, to consider them. So which are the key changes for Brexit? First of all, you need to consider that there are changes in terms of contracts and in terms of legal aspects, um, including references to the European Norsman regulations um, 
or the, the same European Union presenting the contracts. Um, these type of contracts should be analyzed and you need to verify the impact on the functionality and efficacy. Um, the topics that can be affected by these of these key changes are the contractual law and competencies for, for the companies, the INCO tabs. Data protection and intellectual property protection are also um, some of the key areas you need to be careful with. Um, in terms of customs, uh, what companies need to be very careful with uh, is to have up-to-date and correct trade documents um, that are necessary for the new custom control in terms of import-export. Um, take into account that these type of documents and the, this type of trade is not categorized anymore as inter-community trade exchanges. And at the moment is present a three-phase system uh, in force, um, is in force at the moment, which means that the first phase of this three-phase system was back in January. Uh, the other phase, so with the further restriction, will be uh, activated in October, while the last phase will be in January 2022. Uh, what you need to consider in terms of, um, of uh, uh, areas uh, and, and, and regulations and, and new changes that you need to uh, be careful with. Uh, remember that companies need to have an EORI number in order to trade with the UK. We, companies need to uh, keep an eye on the preferential origin rules and then in, conformity, in the conformity marks. This because um, before Brexit, companies could uh, just request the CE marking. Uh, but now um, the UK is including a new type of mark, marking, which is the UKCA. Uh, also, REC system is changing, so please uh, be careful with that. In terms of fis fiscal aspects, uh, please uh, evaluate the impact that is generated by the new trade relations between the UK and the European Union. And this is affecting the VAT, VAT payments, VAT registrations, but also the consignment of stock and e-commerce uh, for international companies. Um, so the Chamber of Commerce is able to provide this type of information. Online, you can find the Brexit guide that can be useful uh, to start understanding if the UK is the right market for you. Um, feel free to contact us if you need any uh, further information about this. Um, so now I'm very happy to pass the screen to Sarah Walton. And Sarah, please uh, feel free to introduce yourself. Sarah is the sector lead in the agri for the BSI. Sarah, the screen is yours. Um, can I move the um, slides on or are you moving the slides? I'm moving the slides, so feel free. Feel free I to... shall just say, move the slide when I get there. Okay. Yeah. So thank you very much, Julie. That was very interesting um, to hear. Um, and, and I will sort of try to, to sort of streamline and fill in some of the some of the information that, that Julia mentioned there is, as, um, as she was talking about things like the issues of EU exit and COVID and, and some of those things which are um, interesting to the UK market in particular, but, but which of course are obviously something that we've all got to be concerned with um, post pandemic, et cetera, particularly in Europe, but obviously also further afield um, considering issues around trade um, in the future. Um, so the next slide is uh, a little bit about um, the sort of drivers in the UK. So, so just to sort of um, just go back one, BSI is part of ISO. Uh, we're members of ISO, which is the International Standardization Organization. Um, and much like um, the, the Italian um, standards body and the French standards body, AFNOR and the, you know, all of the different standards bodies around the world, and C is one in America. Um, and we, there are 163 or five, I think, members of the, um, I think it's 163 actually now, of the um, of ISO and BSI is the UK member. And I work for BSI and have done for some time in the standardization development area, looking at the challenges for those working in the agri-food sector in particular. So some of these challenges are just sort of summarised here, and you'll recognise, I'm sure, many of them, both from what Julia was just talking about and, and also from your own, uh, your own country's you know, issues at the moment. So uh, at the, right at the moment, we're very, very focused on 
uh, problems around climate adaptation and sustainability for the food system in particular, um, but, but obviously for, for all aspects of, of different uh, industry and supply chain for the planet. Um, and so the, the UN climate action is very, um, is very much up utmost I mean, top of our minds at the moment in the UK, uh, with COP26 coming to Glasgow towards the end of this year in November. Um, the ISO last week um, in, uh, in, well, we had a virtual meeting, but the, the BSI was the host of that meeting. And we, we signed a, a, a London declaration to uh, make sure that all standards being produced from now on include aspects of sustainability within them so that, that the, the goals and the objectives of all countries and policymakers um, and industries towards more sustainability um, and uh, lower um, emissions for the planet are being uh, accounted for within standards so that people have rules to follow ways in which they can achieve some of the results that they need because standards are really useful tools to help meet some of these obligations in a very form, form, um, formalized and codified way um, that people have agreed to, that people have a, have a say in it. So sustainability, top of mind, uh, issues around um, trade, which have obviously um, Julia covered very effectively there. So there are a lot of issues around how we're going to be trading in the future for food security, uh, for uh, the issues around COVID disruption. You may have seen a lot in the press recently about um, issues that we've had with, um, with supply, dry, um, supply chain and finding drivers, deliveries for, for things within the country, within the UK at the moment. Um, we have a national food strategy that was recently published so that we're thinking about population health and how, uh, how we can make sure that things uh, are much more um, effectively nutritious within the food system, um, both within the UK and obviously around the world. These are, these are issues obviously for every, every country, um, including the, the issue around digitization and how that may also help to make things better, more sustainable, more secure um, and more effective in the future. So those are, so those are just a few things there. And then next slide will just, as I mentioned that BSI is the standard body for the UK. So we're engaged in making standards and ensuring that people find out about the standards that are required that might be helpful to them in their business. Um, and we are, and this, this is just a landscape of, of where we all sit within that. So there's ISO is the international organization, as I mentioned, um, and IEC is the electrotechnical side of things. And then of course you have the European bodies uh, of which you know, both, both the uh, Italian, French, Spanish, English, uh, British rather, uh, are, are all part of that um, uh, system because it's not, um, it is about geographical location rather than uh, a political uh, issue. So we are still part of that um, European bodies uh, uh, situation in the UK. So next slide. Just to say a little bit about what we mean when we say standard. So standard is a useful word for implying, you know, good quality of something, which is which is essentially what it is. Um, but when we say standard in the in the ISO system and BSI as being part of that, we think of um, agreement. It's basically an agreement by all of the experts, the expert stakeholders to a party, whether they're policymakers or industry or consumer representatives. Um, they come together to agree, uh, which is the consensus that, that, that is talked about here, consensus-based agreement, that this is something that good looks like this for now. And we want to all agree to, to meet this as a, a way of doing something for the time being. Um, and it's an independently um, developed um, tool it's not fixed in stone, it's very flexible, but it is a tool which can complement um, legislative endeavors, uh, such as we're hoping to be able to do with the, with the climate adaptation, as mentioned earlier. Um, and it's a tool which in, involves the most parties, most stakeholders to an issue as, as can be brought in. So it's very important to, to, to remember that a standard is, um, 
and this this is food safety management is the big food standard in this in this space that you may well have heard of it's a, a management system standard and it has different parts to it which takes into account um, both areas of, of catering which of course would be particularly interesting to um, expo cook but uh, but every other aspect of the food chain including manufacturing and farming and food packaging manufacturing logistics um, and there are a couple of others, but I will have to consult my notes to tell you what they are, but they are all, um, they are all aspects of that food safety management uh, system standard, which have been developed over time and by all of the um, expert stakeholders, people who are involved and engaged organizations like yourselves who are in, engaged in, in the food chain, um, coming together and agreeing what they want to see that good will look like if they agree it. And so that everybody is all talking on the same page about something. Next slide, please. Um, so this is just um, to reiterate how we come, we, we make sure that everybody gets an opportunity to take part in making a standard. A standard is, is, is a journey rather than a destination. So we, we don't, it's, it's very different as I will explain in a moment from a, a regulation in that it, it can help very much to, to help you know, organizations to, to meet obligations that they have been set either under regulation or policy objectives or their own ambitions as, as organizations. But, um, but really it's, it's a very um, open and iterative process and we encourage anybody with, a, with a, an interest in a particular area, in this case, the food system, the food chain, to, to come along and to, you know, to take part and to, to make sure that they, they badger their own national committees to take part in, in making changes to, to standards if they don't think they fit the bill. Uh, next stage, next uh, slide, please. So the next slide is just, um, yeah, so people often ask, what is the difference between standards and legislation or regulation? Um, and there is a big difference. So in, in the front, but regulation is very much, um, Mandatory. You have to you have to um, um, abide by national um, regulation and legislation. Um, whereas standards are voluntary, but standards should, um, but they can complement and they can help you reach your your obligations. They can they can also, in some cases, they're written into it, particularly European um, directives. The, the official journal might mention. This is a good way of meeting this regulation by using this standard. Um, and people put standards into 10 direct documents and say, if you meet 22,000, for example, um, the food safety management standard, we will consider that you've met obligations for such and such within our requirements as a, as a customer of yours. Uh, so that, that can happen. Um, the other useful thing about a, a, a standard is that it will cross borders, um, so very useful in trade, as, as Julia was, was mentioning earlier. It crosses borders um, and in a way that obviously legislation often cannot. Um, and so it's, it's a language, it's a, a lingua franca for organisations and industry to, to be able to operate with each other and to trade effectively together. Uh, next slide. So, oh, this one, I, I think we can skip that one. That's a, that's a duplicate slide. So the types of um, standards that, um, that are sort of relevant to the food chain are things, I, I noted that Julia mentioned quality and authenticity of product. This is very important to, to the UK market, to every market, of course, and then all around the world, but it's a very important thing. Um, and there are many standards that, um, that help organizations to trade. I've mentioned one already, 22,000 is, is, is a key standard. We have standards that are very specific about different types of um, foodstuffs, for example, which uh, I've mentioned a couple here, which are a, 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 a new standards to help people to, um, to be assured that they're using a, a crop that has been produced in a certain way to, um, that, in a, a, that naturally inculcate um, enrichment of zinc within the crop. So it's a natural way of, of, of ensuring that that is produced. Um, and the, the other sorts of standards uh, around quality and authenticity, 
um, to ensure that you meet a standard are, are used for testing in laboratories, microbiology um, standards, testing for different aspects of what might be in a product like meat or milk. Um, and those are very important standards that are being used by, by test laboratories when, when things are being traded across borders. Other standards that we're very interested in, of course, are the, as I've mentioned already, I won't say again, the environment and sustainability standards, net zero, carbon emissions, climate adaptation standards should you know, be, help organizations to achieve those things when they're responsibly um, procuring or operating um, their own business in, in um, thinking about waste and also packaging. So, you know, plastics and packaging within, um, within foodstuffs are a very, very big issue. Um, with there also, there are standards around safety and, and ethics. Uh, so we think about things like um, overall, we're currently working on a standard on, on avoidance of modern slavery, uh, so modern slavery assessment of risk within within the supply chain. Uh, there are standards on um, chain chain of custody, sustainable procurement, um, food safety culture. These are these are aspects of, of ethical behaviours that that need to be considered within organisations and standards designed to help support that. And equally, there are standards around innovation and digitization that also help to support new ways of producing food in the markets. And um, one of the issues in the, the labor is, is um, a, a problem to, to find for certain aspects of producing food. Uh, you know, more and more robotics are being used in the field. There need to be standards to support that both on the manufacturing side and on the operating side so those are, that's just one example of how it might so standards can support digitization uh, next slide please <clears throat> uh, this is just um I, this is really for your uh, for you to sort of refer to later which I've, I've just made a selection of standards in particular areas that, that you might find interesting to refer to to look at and, and think that your organization might might be interested to to perhaps to see if those things could help uh, improve uh, your own performance within your own organization so those are those are just some selected examples although one i will mention because um we talked about border control and and the need to be careful of, of, of how you're uh, crossing borders with with you know, making sure that you are, you're assured of the safety of product. There is a standard that was recently produced um, on temperature control delivery services, um, and that arose out of so this is about chilled food and parcels to make so that there is uh, so that you can be uh, confident that what your uh, that your parcel of food is 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 being delivered at the same temperature across different. Um, points of contact on, on any supply chain and across borders as well. And that's, a, that's quite an interesting uh, new, newish standard. So uh, next slide, please. Um, I won't dwell too much on this. This is again for you to refer to later. This is an example of, of a standard and how it might work as a framework to help people to, to think about their own procurement and responsible ways of procuring things. This is a standard that is general across all the supply chain, but but obviously foodstuffs are very often things which are to be procured. So um, I, I just uh, put that in there for you to to have a look at later. And the next standard is the next slide is also about um, assurance programs and certification schemes within that. So if Julia, that next slide is oh I see it's I didn't even realise this slide had animation on it i beg your pardon <laughs> it's very exciting so yes this slide that slide is just to um to mention that obviously some of these standards are are, are, are third party can be third party assessed and these are just examples of some of the organizations that have schemes in place or 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 are in fact certification bodies in their own right that might help organizations to to independently assess by it from a third party perspective that they have actually met uh, requirements within a standard as part of a scheme that they have set so that's that's just one of the just an aspect of the standardization um, framework within within uh, trade 
uh, for trade purposes that you might be interested to know a bit more about. Next slide. And I have some slides here which are really more about um, the packaging side of things. So as you'll know, in the emphasis in the EU is um, to reduce uh, packaging, over packaging waste, um, driving design for reuse and recyclability and reducing complexity of packaging materials. Um, and so they, they want to establish the mandatory requirements in the EU for, for recycled content. And there, there's a lot of work going on both at EU and international level in, in all of these spaces. So um, I, there are some select, selected uh, examples here and on the following few slides, which give you some, some ideas of, of where, those, where that work is carrying on. If you're interested in any of it, you should speak with local national standards body about being a representative to take part or to see how you could comment on any of the standards that are being developed in that space. Um, and those are the, the, you know, the uh, conventions and directives which are, are key to this, this strategy, particularly in Europe. Next slide, please. I think this and the next couple are all about the these are standards that are in development for recycled material. So each aspect of, of is, it's, it's a complex space, the whole packaging space. So I, I, because it's so complex, there are sort of there's recycled material types of standards being developed um, to help people understand how you know, the best ways to produce that. And then the next one is about novel material. Uh, the next slide. Yeah. And and also on biodegradability is the next slide, biodegradability and composting. And I won't go into those in too much depth, but, but they are there for you to, to, to refer to and so you can look them up uh, and, and what those are about. The final one I think is about um, uh, single use beverage containers with um, capacity of three liters. So it's, it's very specific stuff, but, um, but, and you may all be aware of it, but it's just a, an ex a, it's a useful example to, to point out how, um, how practical standards are. They are very much about the practical solutions that you can find um, and, and how to help you get to them in order to be able to carry on your business. And that I think is my final slide. I just have, you know, ask, ask, me, ask me any questions you like and I'll see if I can help. <laughs> so thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Sarah. And um, I also see here Jada Platania from uh, Sitch Industria. Uh, Ian, my colleague from Ian, I'm very, very happy to, to work with. And uh, one of the organizers of, active the organizer of Expo Cook. And thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we are both, Sarah and myself are happy to answer to any questions um, that are coming from uh, from the audience in Palermo. I don't know if somebody's there. Yeah, as, as you know, today we are showing you in a, in a big screen uh, in presence and also uh, in the virtual mode, there is a big conference also. Companies are, are following you thank you Sarah for 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 presenting this this is a very uh, dense topic and I, I think it needs some time for companies to to process it and I'm sure they will come with several questions also because this is just the first of three webinars that we have organized together with Julia and as you were anticipating tomorrow we'll we're talking about packaging um, I saw you nodding about the packaging. Yeah. Regulations, so yeah. So, and yeah. tomorrow the webinar will be about sustainable packaging and smart packaging. Uh, so all all the issues you've been tackling uh, right today it, they will be very useful for tomorrow's webinar as well. And uh, on on the, on the thirties we'll complete this set of webinars with UK about UK. Uh, with the, another webinar on e-commerce and how to be successful in the UK. So it's we, we have a very tight collaboration with UK uh, and the Enterprise Europe Network partners, especially with Julia. Uh, so we will definitely have new uh, questions and we will need your support, Sarah, for, for 
clarifying oh, several aspects about the standards. Please feel free. well. Any person or oh, Jada, if you're if you're in contact with any companies, they need any type of support. Please feel free to put them in contact with us. You know, as a chamber of commerce, we are happy to help them also in Italian. I know yes. that is one of the key issues sometimes with yes. the Italian yes. companies. So we can facilitate the 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 entrance in the UK market uh, from this from at least the linguistic point of view. Yeah, that makes yeah. communication smoother. Yeah. So <laughs> companies feel more relaxed. Yeah. Even when they speak well English, sometimes they prefer to have a more friendly approach with their own language. I think yeah. it happens everywhere. It's, it's a sort of cultural approach. It's yes, different. yes. At the moment, there are many new regulations, as we were mentioning, but also many new requirements to enter into the UK. So companies that were trading with the UK till a couple of years ago, they may see a change in this type of yeah. uh, uh, requirements. Uh, so, of course, we are... Uh, we updated about them and we are working with them. So we're working with many companies that at the moment are trading from Italy to the UK. Um, my key suggestion is just to do the paperwork, the homework, actually, yeah. in terms of registration, VAT registration. So this is the Italian IVA. Uh, you need to register in the, U in the UK. Mm -hmm. Remember that there are custom uh, that you need to pay. And depending on the type of product, it may not depending on the quantity, you also need to pay the VAT. But there is an agreement between the two countries. So if uh, you, you're based in Italy, you don't need in some cases to pay the VAT. So these are all um, information that we can provide to you um, at the um, uh, general level. If you need, if company needs any type of more detailed information about specific product, how to import them, which are the distributors, because now you need to have an agent here in the UK in order to distribute here. Uh, we can put in contact with the relevant companies, uh, with the relevant agents, and we can provide information. Uh, of course, uh, with the Chamber of Commerce, we're having a, a wide network of members. Most of them are Italian or uh, of Italian heritage. So again, so for any struggles with the language, we are more than happy to help the other companies. And in terms of Innova UK Edge, uh, if you want, if companies want to work with any company that is present in the UK, that is doing innovation in the agri-food sector, that especially this is particularly important in terms of packaging, but also in terms of plant-based products, for instance, yeah. which are very common in the UK, please feel free mm -hmm. to contact us because I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy to help you to put in contact with the right companies as Jada does every day. So um, it's, a, it's a very, it's a very good um, and, and, and nice collaboration uh, between the UK and Italy. Waiting uh, uh, to be able to invite you in presence. Both I hope soon. I hope soon. I'm Italian, so I'm really missing Italy. <laughs> As you can see. Perfecto. Provo, provo. Benissimo. So, well, for any difficulty, yeah. linguistic difficulty, we are here to help <laughs> also Sarah, so which is very good. So, I wish to thank you for, for, for organizing this webinar, and uh, I'm sure we will uh, contact you soon for, for further questions. Okay, thank you very much thank for you. having us here and thank you very much, Sarah, for the very important and, and interesting information about regulations and, and the agri-food sector. Tomorrow we are having the next webinar at uh, um, half past nine UK time, half past 10 Italian time um, on smart and sustainable packaging, which is an important topic for uh, companies that want to export into the UK. And I wish you a very nice evening and uh, see you tomorrow then. See you tomorrow. Bye. See you. Thank you. Bye-bye.